Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here, I'm Oriel, and today we are complaining about makeup. Alright guys, I heard your pleas. I heard you guys wanted to hear me complain about makeup packaging that I hate. So I compiled a cursory list of things that I could recall off the top of my head that drive me bonkers about makeup packaging. Obviously, this is a very perfunctory list, so it's not going to be that long. Probably longer than most people because I am very picky and I'm a terrible person, but um, I could definitely do multiple sequels of this video. So if you like the TS spill in this video, don't forget to let me know down below so I can make another one. Um, but let's just jump into it. We're going to start with something that is um, relevant to getting ready for today, which is I tried to put on a lipstick and um, I put on three because all three of these lipsticks look the freaking same. So my first, my first pet peeve is when all products look the same and you can't identify what is what from the outside packaging. All right, guys, we are in 2020. We are fast approaching 2021. We should be able to normalize product that enhances or showcases the kind of products that is on the inside. Why is it that MAC can create a million and one components for all their limited releases, but they can't freaking coordinate the color of the inside product with the product on the inside? Like, how hard is it to make custom packaging for, like, an item. This is a company that has billions of dollars, I assume, and they just, they can't be bothered to give us a little window, a little clear acrylic something. They can't tint this product. They can't do anything to let us know what color lipstick is in here. Really, Mac? You can't? I mean, this is not like a foundation product where each person has like the one or even foundation products, right? They have like windows or glass. I mean, like I would, I would imagine this is why working makeup artists have to decant all their stick lipsticks because it's unsanitary, one. But two, it's impossible to find anything like this. Like it's just, they couldn't even do us the obligation of putting the sticker color on the bottom. They just had to give us a name. They couldn't even like color coordinate the sticker. Very lazy, very disappointing. It happens all the time, but I specifically find that it's frustrating with lip products because usually a lip product is coming on at the very end, or at least that's how I do. My routine is I put lip product at the end and usually there's a kind of color I'm going for by the time I get to the lips of the look. So like I do a makeup look and I'm like, ooh, I wanna wear a red lip, which is what happened today. I wanted to wear Lady Danger. <laughs> I put on Lady Danger after putting on Velvet Teddy and you know, freaking chili. Cause I was like, I can't be bothered to open up all these lipsticks and not apply them. So I ended up mixing everything onto my mouth, but it is just frustrating. I hate packaging that is inherently cumbersome, like excessively cumbersome to the point where the user has to spend more of their own time doing this. And and my favorite brand, Charlotte Tilbury, is actually, you know, guilty of this as well. So it's not just Mac. <laughs> I know I kind of have a vendetta against Mac for being like not with the times, but it's not just them. I feel like a lot of companies don't do color coordinated packaging and it's frustrating to me as someone who tends to buy a lot from the same brand. I don't like to buy a lot of different stuff like one from this company, one from that company, etc., etc. Because what I find is that it ends up making my display look very messy and jumbled. So I personally really like having a large collection of the same kind of item. And look what Maybelline does. Maybelline does color coordinating packaging or at the very least stickers on the bottom that are color coordinating. So at a glance in storage, you can see what is what just by the color of the sticker. That is really not that hard to implement and I don't know why companies still can't do that. My next packaging peeve is <laughs> kind of contrary to this, um, which is just a clear acrylic product. Um, I'm specifically thinking of those e.l.f. Seriously Satin lipsticks, which I own two of, and the KKW lipsticks, and you know, I think Hard Candy might have had a packaging release like this, but um, I'm also thinking of like Milk with their sticks, but anything that is clear, entirely clear, also the Tower 28 compacts, those are so slick and chic and cool in, you know, in a vacuum like conceptually they're very sexy concepts it's like clear and packaging and it's translucent or it's jelly and it just looks like glass and what a beautiful object to hold right if it is makeup you are using and specifically it is if it's makeup that is creamy and going to smudge around like cream blush potted blush liquid lipstick regular stick lipstick that kind of stuff is going to smear everywhere it's emollient it's creamy and my least favorite thing is when something is pigmented and it gets caught in the acrylic threads, so like the actual screw top of a product, 
Because when you put a product back on, the cap is going to be gunked up with stuff. So think about your Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Spotlight Wand. Think about your Maybelline Instant Age Wand. Anything that has like a gunky top. And then make the whole component acrylic. Like who, who thought of that? I don't mind powder products being in clear acrylic. Like that ghost packaging I thought was really cute. Um, a lot of Korean eyeshadows come in like a clear translucent jelly-like hard acrylic. That's fine because you can wipe off powder relatively easily. But like... A very emollient product, something that is like 90% grease, that does not belong in a clear acrylic product because you're going to get gunk everywhere. It's like a huge pet peeve of mine because that stuff is literally only nice to photograph and do like flat lays and close-up shots if you are someone who does not use their makeup or if you're someone who obsessively cleans their makeup packaging after every use, which is like not me and I, I doubt it's any of you guys. Like, I feel like most people just use their makeup and then if the packaging serves to enhance a product, it needs to enhance that product's aesthetics like through and through, like even in use. You have to be thoughtful about package design, right? And I just feel like that is not thoughtful. Next, I have bulky or weirdly shaped items. And specifically, I'm thinking of that Nikita Dragon face palette because it's just weird. But I also, I know that that's not the only one. I'm also thinking of like really thick, chunky, strange, irregular cases like the Jeffree Star casket cases or like that giant P. Louise box that like is like a shadow box, but not a shadow box because it's just an eyeshadow palette or stuff that has holes for other products so if you think about all the holiday releases from Tarte or Too Faced that have inset <laughs> containers for mascara instead of just giving you a separate mascara they put like an inlay for the mascara in the palette so that way you've got this like weirdly shaped product and then if you take that product out it's just like there forever Anything that is weirdly shaped, I just want to know who is on the design team for this, right? Like, who is who is up there being like, you know, it'd be really convenient if we created a product that was so irregular in shape and size that it would literally inconvenience people to own this thing. It, it just... I understand wanting to brand your company in a certain way, but it becomes so ostentatious that it becomes like a display of how out of touch some companies are with how regular people store their products. Like... And, and I'm not speaking from the perspective of like a regular person. Like I spend way too much money on makeup. Like, and I'm not even an influencer, right? Like I'm just a regular person who, who cares too much about makeup and makeup storage, like to the point where I am paying for makeup storage. But like, think about your average person who's buying a product, you know, for a gift for the holidays or like because it's a good deal. Like they, they buy this Tarte set because it's like a $50 product for like a $70 value because you're getting free mascara and stuff like that. They bring that home. They put that like in their bathroom, right? Like in their bathroom cabinet or like maybe on their desk or it's like a desk amenity situation what are they gonna do with a box like that it just makes no sense to me um and it's not even like for a collector item it's really just like a value for money thing right like no one's buying those holiday products because they are nostalgic or they they are triggering in some like nice fun way like the alice in wonderland looking glass thingy with urban decay yeah that thing was bulky but at least it was like a collector's piece a holiday item as far as like in my head the conceptual idea of a holiday kit is like more for value for money, right? It's it's more about like getting the free gift with purchase and the stuff that you want in like one bundle that's appealing. It's not the actual packaging that's appealing. So like the packaging in and of itself didn't have to be like that. All I'm saying is bulky weird shaped packaging is is it's like so unreasonable to me on so many levels. Like usually they're ugly to begin with. Like from an aesthetic point, it's ugly. And then on top of that, it doesn't consider the average consumer and how the average consumer is using products. So I hate that. I hate clamshells, um, especially clamshells that just require you to force something open. Um, I have spent too many minutes of my young life <laughs> trying to open up the freaking ColourPop manifest that highlight that I own. What I do enjoy is the easy release of the Marc Jacobs packaging. So if anyone has seen Marc Jacobs packaging, it is a clamshell design, right? It's like this little coin purse situation. But instead of prying this thing open with your acrylic nails and, you know, doing this situation and trying to break a fingernail off, you can push this button and it's like an easy release. Oh, so lovely. It's like Ikea furniture, right? When you have like the soft, soft clothes, <laughs> like those soft clothes drawers. It, this kind of button releases that same like ah, feeling as like when you try a soft closed drawer because this makes so much more sense than like a pull tab. Like this is fine, right? Because you've got like a very clear delineation of like where you can pull. But there are some compacts out there, ColourPop's large compacts being one of them, that you, it's so hard to open up. 
Um, I have one for reference right here. This is my beloved Anastasia Norvina 4 palette. I love the color scheme of this thing, but do you notice something about this? There is no notch for me to open up the container. So I have to go in here and like basically pry this thing open like this. Like I just have to slip my nails into this tiny little beveled edge here and just stick my fingers in here. I have a fake nail that I can show you right now because I'm, you know, in the middle of starting my business. Okay, so this is a nail extension. I now have to come in here with two of these and use my fingernails, my long ass fingernails, which a lot of us in the beauty community, we've got our long ass little dragon claws. We gotta come out here and we gotta use our fingernail to dig in between this crack here, okay, with two hands, two cracks like this, and then pry it open. I mean, how absurd is that process? How hard is it to just create a tiny little notch right up here, okay, Anastasia, you can do this. Create a tiny little notch up here, magnetic release, okay, you just go, okay, Give me a place to put my finger so I can open this thing up without breaking a fingernail. I spent so long describing this because I have lost many a precious hour of my childhood trying to open up clamshell packages. It's just unnecessary. So many companies can just create a freaking notch. Why is it that every other company can create a notch, but some companies are like, you know what, the notch is like overused because it's too accessible. We need to make something more innovative. We need to make something that no one has ever seen before. And they, they come out with stupid stuff like this. Even Too Faced, okay, even Too Faced creates this little coin pouch design, like this coin pouch situation. It's just a quick, you just push in opposite directions. You know, it's like a real coin pouch. How can Too Faced create something with better packaging than ColourPop? I mean, that is really upsetting because I like to imagine ColourPop is like the best makeup brand in the world, and I know they're not, but like, you know, I thought we were on equal, you know, I thought we were seeing eye to eye, and we really aren't. They're moving towards this like larger blush packaging, and it just, every time I see those releases, it makes me cringe because I have those products, and they're incredibly formulated, but the packaging is so deterring that I just cannot bring myself to buy them because this situation is so difficult with ColourPop. You just cannot open the products up, and it drives me crazy. All right, the next thing I don't like is... <laughs> This is really mean. I wrote DIY graphic design. Okay, please don't kill me. But you know what I'm talking about? Those companies that have packaging that is just really, like, they hopped on, like, <laughs> they hopped on Microsoft Paint and they inserted a word box and they just typed the name of their brand and that's it. There are a lot of companies that have a very DIY graphic design chic look and there's only one like large company that I can think of that does this and that is Melt Cosmetics. Melt, get on a new graphics team because I don't know what you guys are doing with your graphic design. Um, I feel like that kind of logo that they have, like the Melt all lowercase sans serif font, that literally looks like a free font that you can download from fonts.com that is in like the fun and whimsical section called like candy lollipop or something like that. It is the most juvenile font. It doesn't match the ethos of the brand whatsoever. Like the brand is all about being like edgy and being like the cool girl and she's like, she's new, she's hip, she can't be like tamed, she's like mysterious. And then you've got this like weird logo and all the packaging is like private labeled AF. Like everything looks really bad. Um, Melt has like a serious packaging problem because like the stacks are like not functional either. Like I don't know what they're doing over there in HQ, but like I just feel like everything is so incongruous and it drives my brain insane. Um, that like DIY graphic chic design, you know, whatever. I feel like that is only appropriate if you are literally selling makeup out of your basement. And even that, <laughs> you can't even justify because there are literal one woman shows, like literally people who design the graphics, they press the eyeshadows, they ship and fulfill everything by themselves in their basements, like in their homes. And even those indie brands can create packaging that is like more ingenuitive than this. So I don't understand in today's day and age with so many like royalty free graphics out there as well, how could you create something so bad? <laughs> like I don't know. So I hate when packaging is ugly. Like I just, it really upsets me because the whole point of makeup, it's like, it's a piece of adornment, right? Like we're not talking about packaging of like milk cartons, okay? This is like a thing that you keep in your house. It is an object of beauty, right? To beautify yourself and to beautify your home. You couldn't even bother to make it look like you tried a little bit. DIY graphic design chic is just like not it for me. Um, I also don't like cardboard and I don't like fabric. So um, that leaves me with literally just high quality plastics or metals. And that's my preferred product. I mean, I really like a certain kind of product in my vanity and we'll talk about things that I, I like in terms of packaging in a different video, but I cannot stand 
cardboard packaging. I know it's better for the environment. I know it is slimmer, it's sleeker, it's easier to travel with. But one, how much are you traveling that you need makeup to be travel friendly? I don't travel more than like once a year, <laughs> if that. How many vacations are people taking that like their everyday makeup has to be travel friendly? If you're so concerned about travel friendliness, um, I don't know, maybe you just live a very lavish lifestyle or you do a lot of like really cool stuff. I don't travel all that much. Um, and I'm sure if you are traveling a lot, you are buying, you know, makeup that is more basic, right? Because you have to be able to carry on the go. It has to be versatile. It has to be, you know, light and easy to, to bring around. And so we're not talking about that. Um, from my perspective, travel is like not a consideration I make when I buy stuff. It's like buying a sweater and being like, oh, but it's too chunky. I won't be able to put it in a suitcase. Like, how often are you worried about that? Um, so for that reason, I don't really care about travel friendliness. From a waste perspective, I should probably care more, um, but I don't. I just, I think that, again, consuming makeup is already such an excess. It would be nice, I guess, if we could find a way to break apart the, uh, the palettes and everything. But, you know, from my perspective, like, if I really cared about the environment, I just, like, wouldn't be buying makeup. I wouldn't be buying makeup in excess. I would just buy the amount needed to do good in society like because we still need to put on makeup to succeed in society and that would be it that would be like me living my best eco-friendly lifestyle and i'm sure if other people disagree and they will um good for you guys uh but for me makeup again is, is so inherently wasteful and harmful for people and the planet that it just if i'm going to be indulgent i need it to be indulgent you know what i mean like and the, the problem with cardboard is usually you have mirrors on the inside usually you have magnets and even if it's a more earth-friendly material you are not breaking it down to its constituents in a recyclably friendly way. So we're probably not even taking advantage of the recyclability fully. So I don't like the cardboard and fabric for obvious reasons is a no-go, especially for powder products or cream products or liquid products. So I don't know what you could use to put in a fabric covered container. That would be a good idea, but the Jeffree Star Velour Purple Blood, whatever it was called, that palette is a hot mess because it's literally velvet. Um, then you've got all of the modern renaissance, um, the prism, the, what was that, subculture? All those Anastasia palettes that come in this velvet container. I had one of those. It was disgusting. I mean, you guys have seen my palettes. I use my makeup like a regular person, like I use it. I don't sit around and polish this stuff to keep it clean for flat lays. And so for the average consumer, their makeup is gonna get nasty, nasty and gross. So I don't really understand why they do that. Next, I really don't like packaging with eyes or faces, especially of real people. I think that just spooks me out. Um, so I really hate all of Huda Katan's packaging, basically, because Huda Beauty, um, everything she has, has like her face. And here's the other thing. I, I hate packaging that has like the titular protagonist on the packaging. Like, so for Huda Beauty, it's like her face. And for Lunar Beauty, it's like Manny's face. And for Jeffree Star, it's his face. Like, why are we so self-absorbed that we're putting our own faces on our products? I mean... Yeah, and Kim Kardashian does it too. Like, she just puts, like, regular... They're not even, like, stylized. They're just, like, photographs of her on her packaging. That is weird, okay? Like, it is already merchandise from your company, right? Like, we are already buying stuff from you. That is, in and of itself, already a symbol of, like, you being, like, you know, that. But then on top of it, you have to, like, put a photorealistic picture of yourself or, like, a stylized image of your eyes or, like, you know, it just... This is a personal preference thing, but I find it extremely tacky, and I never really like having real faces on my products and if they're going to be real faces i would prefer if they were highly stylized if they're like just photographs of someone it just doesn't feel like package design it just feels like like we haven't designed the packaging on this oh like we have these photos from instagram let's put it on and i'm sure that's not going to be a popular opinion but like i i don't want to see that <laughs> i want like something more tasteful you know all right the next thing i hate are pots that i have to dip into what world do we live in in 2020, almost 2021, where we can't just have airless pumps for everything. I mean, I don't need to dip into my eye primer like that. Like, no, it's so unsanitary. It's so dirty. I don't know what I would propose separately, but I do know Tarte had that like artist liner. It was a gel liner and it came in a tube and it had like a kind of concave spatula top. So you would squeeze a little bit out and it would rest in this little palette. Why don't we have that for other things? I mean, I feel like so many things could be put in squeeze bottles with like little pellets. If we didn't want it to be liquidy and shoot out over the place, you'd have a tiny little bowl kind of surface with a hole on the inside um, and kind of just like pick it up, right? Like eye primer. Um, I hate the fact that I have to dig into my eye primer. And then on top of the fact that I have to dig into it and the free edge of my nail gets covered in product. You could also do the thing where you scoop like this, like you scoop outwards. But then again, you're getting the surface of your nail all over this product 
I don't like that. I also don't like the fact that so much air is exposed at all times and the more you use it, the more you expose surface area. So like now on top of that, to compound those issues of like oldness and freshness, you now have like an increasingly large surface area that is now exposed to even more air. I just like don't know why that's still a thing. Like who is, who is up here saying, I prefer pots over other methods of packaging? Because I also don't think it's easier to store, right? Like it's a wide flat container. Wouldn't a taller, slimmer, not even tall, but like more proportionately fitted container be better? I don't know, just my thought process. I personally don't like pots. I don't like pots for gels, creams, eyeshadows, any kind of concealer or base product. I just, lip balms, like why are lip balms in pots? Anyway, I don't like that. The other thing I don't like are palettes with mirrors that don't stand up. What is the point of having a palette with a mirror if it doesn't stand up? Or mirrors that have like weird cutouts in them, like this one? What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Okay, this thing, <laughs> it's got like a scalloped edge. This mirror is so freaking small. Look at how much space they could have had for this mirror. And honestly, I feel like the mirror, yeah, it goes all the way to the edge. It goes corner to corner and they covered up a quarter of it with this stupid scalloped edge here. No one is missing this scalloped edge. No one is gonna have this palette, right? Okay, let's say I bought this palette for the theming. I love pumpkin spice. I love the holidays. I just really die for spice and pie and all these things. And I open up this palette and the mirror is corner to corner. I'm not gonna look at this and be like, you know what, the theming on the outside was great. Theming on the inside is great, but I'm really missing package design on the mirror. Too Faced, what were you thinking? And this is not the only brand that does this. There are so many brands that put images over the mirror. We want, like if we're paying for the mirror, if the earth is going to suffer for us putting mirrors in every single last one of our palettes, they should be usable mirrors. Why are we covering up a mirror that already exists with more cardboard? I understand if to save waste and to save resources, they actually shrink the physical size of the mirror and then cover the sides with cardboard to like conceal it. But I just touched that palette. There was mirror from corner to corner and then we covered it. That's so stupid to me, like I don't understand it. Anyway, um, the next thing I don't like is um, mini products, especially mini lipsticks, because mini lipsticks usually are too small to do anything, and as soon as you put any amount of pressure on the product, it just like falls out. I also hate, in general, uh, products that are not in the right packaging. So I, I wrote thoughtless products, but this also includes um, like lipsticks that are in, how do I say this? Okay, so you know how most lipsticks have this kind of container where there's like a, uh, like a supporting product here, and then there's like a shoot that goes up and down and you can kind of screw it up and screw it down. But very emollient lipsticks often have this like extended tip release, how do I say this? There's like a sheath. It's like those long lipsticks that have like a taller thing here and you just kind of scroll up the lipstick little by little and the whole thing doesn't rotate, it's just the core that rotates. The L'Oreal Color Reach Shines have it. Um, I, I'll just put a picture up so you can see. I hate when a product needs to be in that kind of extra support lipstick tube, and it's not because, I don't know, aesthetics? I Just really emollient lipsticks need to be babied in a way that regular lipsticks do not need to be babied. And you will notice because you'll see little marks on the edge of your lipsticks that um, indicate that the formula is too soft, even, you know, with weather conditions, you know, permitting and everything else. In temperate climate, right, in a regular room temperature environment, if my lipstick is veering off to one side and it's about to snap, because I'm using it like a regular human being. Like I'm not scrolling out, I'm just scrolling up enough to cover the surface area of my lips. If my lipstick is tilting over sideways, that might be a sign that the lipstick design packaging was not good. Maybe it should have gone in a different package. Like I just, there are so many slim cases, like slim lipstick cases that are used to protect the core of the lipstick. So many brands do this. And yet, why is it so common for these products to just like lose their functionality because the packaging was like thoughtless? Another thing, why make a product be like for precision and like accuracy that like dulls down as you use it? I'm specifically thinking about like pencil products, chubby stick style products or brow products like brow highlighting products or brow filler products and when you buy the product it's nice and pointy and then when you use it up it becomes like a chonky one inch thick pencil. What is the point of that? Who does that serve? Why would you design a product that is sharp when you have it brand new and then becomes hella thick <laughs> at the end? What is the point? Why couldn't they have just made it the same size all the way through? If you wanted it to be a precise product, like a lip liner shaped tip, just make it a smaller product. I mean, make it smaller and longer maybe, or like 
offer two in a pack if you're worried about cost but i just don't understand what the point of having like a jumbo stick sharpened to an extra fine point is because that jumbo stick no one's gonna continually sharpen it to be extra pointy because you waste so much product and then on top of that by the time you wear it down to its regular width it's gonna not be precise anymore like what is i don't know i also don't like irregular design or motifs like when stuff is just doesn't make sense um i'm thinking about eyeshadow placement that is irregular so i'll list all the typical examples here where the eyeshadows are infuriating because they're placed in a stupid way we all know that this is absolutely mind-bogglingly senseless i mean it's just grating to the eyeballs. I don't know anyone who has looked at a palette with irregular placement of eyeshadows and been like, you know what, I prefer this better than the regular eyeshadows. I mean, it, it adds a spice that I don't get from regular products. No one has said that. <laughs> Everyone who, at least I've heard, either has a neutral opinion, like they don't hate it. They're like, oh, like it doesn't bother me. Or they hate it. And that leads me to believe that companies do this just to generate some kind of buzz around their product, like some kind of like hate fame going around their thing because if the if the choice is people are neutral about it and they don't mind or people hate it and they want to boycott your brand because it's really upsetting to them why would you go for that choice the other option is to do the thing that is like tried and true and like normal and the alternative is to do something that could potentially anger a bunch of customers why would you choose to do the thing that angers people and it angers people because it is so grating on the eyes like it is so assaulting to my senses to see things placed irregularly like this and it's not like irregular in some kind of tasteful way you know, or like you know where it, it actually means something like i i understand like remember that kat von d stained glass window thing and like people were weirded out because it was kind of like a weird shape at least that was to further a vision i would go so far as to say that like melt palette too the one that was like a weird staircase situation i opened up at least that also very weird irregular placement but it had this sense of symmetry and pattern and predictability that wasn't pure chaos what i hate is the pure unbridled chaos of like throwing a bunch of eyeshadow pans it was like they took the empty eyeshadow pans and they went like this and they saw the shape that it created on the floor and they were like yeah let's cut it let's uh let's do it like this why why it, it has, sometimes it just has no purpose whatsoever and it just creates this sense of unsettlingness like I, I just feel unsettled when i look at some of these products and that drives me crazy all right the next thing i hate is uh stuff that's faulty so i've labeled um droppers nozzles caps um any kind of pump or dispense like the, the, the dispensing method wow i couldn't say that i'm so mad that i couldn't say that um the dispensing method itself is faulty so for instance putting a cuticle oil in a pump and having it like pump out and then like being a mess or having a dropper with a thick product that um evaporates and then just gets really goopy so you can't like pump it anymore having a cap that really needs to be on a product but having it be really flimsy and loose and fly off having some kind of component that makes your product good for travel but then um that piece is detachable and you can lose it nozzles that don't work with like clogging products so if you have a product that actually does kind of clog in the um, sprayer maybe don't do that <laughs> just like what is the point of us as consumers coming to manufacturers or like you know producers for con like for a product if they can't even get the product in the right companies have one job and it's like a slightly longer iteration of this but it is essentially to conceptualize and create a product that is needed in the market somehow and provide it in a way that is usable for the customer and i just don't understand how like so many of these things can be flops like no one in the chain of design like from the inception of the idea all the way to the execution and distribution of the product no one has stopped and said hey this thing like actually doesn't work after two weeks of use like do they not test these products i'm thinking specifically of like two items from cover effects that i owned and it's particularly upsetting because cover effects brands itself as like a pro brand or an artist brand and yet i have not tried a single product from them that is like pro quality for instance their compacts uh some of the hinges are really loose and so i've had foundation compacts that just snap in half i'm thinking about a setting spray that like the nozzle would clog up after literally one week of use who tested your product if anyone tested for any length of time this setting spray they would have realized that the nozzle is effectively useless after one week of using it that could have been fixed either by changing the formula or changing the packaging i also remember those custom cover drops like the drop that you could use to adjust your color to make it the, the droppers you could use to drop into any product to make it 
better match lighten darken warm like you know make it cooler whatever right those are a really good idea because it was like pure pigment it's not going to change the formula it's just going to change the color they had all these claims about it being an artist grade product right the dropper didn't work <laughs> I mean, and what was the point was it just novelty to have it in a dropper like oh like you're you're mixing things on a palette blah, blah, blah. like i just feel like a pump could have worked equally well i don't or a squeeze tube like what what was the novelty of the draw like what, i think it was really just for novelty but i remember because it was such a thick product it was all pigment it had like no water or very little water content um so it, it wasn't a good droppable product it wasn't a liquidy product it was like a cream product you take it out of the container first of all the container gets covered in gunk right like imagine a concealer and then pulling in you know like a concealer like this but not having a stopper a concealer like this the threads already get nasty af right now imagine this with no stopper, right? Like it's just a container with a dropper and so you're gonna pull it out. This product is already thick, it's goopy, it dries up in air, it, it oxidizes, it evaporates, it becomes this thick, nasty, cakey product with just pigment and then you push the release at the top to release product to you know let it come out. It doesn't come out because it's not liquid. I mean, I just don't understand why you would make faulty or inconsiderate packaging. Again, this kind of is like, um, Oh, one other thing, another version of this is like when you have a all-in-one palette, like a face, eye, brow, lips product, kind of like those It Cosmetics holiday books or the Physician's Formula thing, and they put cream, like cream concealer and eyebrow product in the same freaking row. Or like it's like the, the top half of the palette. Bro, in what world is that a good idea? You're going to put dark brown eyeshadow or eyeliner powder next to anyone's skin tone in a cream concealer, like a just open to the air. First of all, open to the air creams, stupid, stupid idea. I don't know why they do that, especially for holiday palettes where it's supposed to be a good value. I don't understand that. And then on top of that, you're gonna just have open powders mixing in there. Not even open siblings in the same, like we're not talking about my NARS, you know, Overlust where you've got like a cream blush and a powder blush and they're mixing, like whatever, I can deal with that. But you're talking about like a black powder and a white cream. And they're gonna mix there's not there's not gonna be any kind of like cover you're not gonna put any kind of like shield down it's just it's just the film okay i mean i don't understand that happened with my physician's formula vault too where they put the black and brown eyeshadows literally like the darkest smoky plum eyeshadows dark gray charcoal black coal any kind of like really smoky eyeshadow and they literally put it next to like bronzers and blush you just fold it up like this and the only thing that they did to help you protect those products was give you a little little plastic film like a tamper proof packaging film just to show that like the product is new i literally had to save that and tape it down every time i wanted to use my product because i don't want my loose eyeshadows to close up and touch my cream products i just that's not that hard to understand and yet it took until like 2018 for brands to like cover their creams next to their powders <sighs> i don't understand that um, I also don't understand double-ended brushes unless you are someone who like puts all their brushes in a makeup brush pouch and then like goes into the public. Why do we need those? How am I, how am I supposed to store a double-ended brush? In what end am I supposed to store this thing? Am I supposed to put it in a cup like upright where I store literally all the other brushes in my collection? I guarantee like 90 to 95 percent of people I, uh, that watch my videos and like any other videos on YouTube, they put their makeup brushes like in a cup like a brush holding cup or like a jar or some kind of like container upright so they can reach out and like grab their brushes because all brushes are the same they have like a brush on one end and a handle on the other end why would anyone make a double-ended brush unless it were like explicitly part of a travel kit which to be fair a lot of them are a lot of those double brushes um are actually advertised as like a travel friendly kit in which case i would say why can't you just bring your regular brushes with you in a kit because like <laughs> having travel brushes is going to take up more space than just using your regular brushes and putting them in a travel kit. The things we do for marketing, guys, like I just, it's not feasible. Like if you are buying a brush specifically for travel, you either have a life that is so privileged that you have a brush for travel, which is fine, like whatever. I'm not dogging on that lifestyle. I'm just saying like you are not the average, right? Like if you are someone who has so much traveling to do, that you are like bringing luxury makeup and buying like dual-ended brushes for that purpose specifically for <laughs> the means of traveling in a lighter convenient way um you're probably not the person i'm talking to right now if you're traveling for work 
you're probably not buying like a fancy travel brush either, right? Like if you're someone who just has to travel because their work requires them to travel frequently, I can't imagine you'd be wanting like a luxury double-ended brush either. And you just bring your regular stuff, I don't know. I also just don't like, well, where are you gonna store it when you're not traveling? Cause like, I don't know people who travel like all the time. I mean, I, I do know someone who basically doesn't have an apartment to live in because they have to travel for work like 350 days out of the 365 days of the year because that's like their job. But I don't know anyone else besides that person who like needs to be traveling so often that they cannot find permanent storage for their brushes. So I don't understand that. And the last thing I have um, for today is unrealistic, <laughs> super realistic packaging for really weird things. But I also feel like there was a seal palette recently i think it was an indie brand and it was like a seal like a literal seal on the packaging like why why are like i thought the whole point of like this was that we wanted graphic design and not like real things lauren may beauty definitely talks about how like um she's okay with like desserts because they're cute like the milkshake palette was okay because it's it's cute but like a burger a taco those things being photorealistic are like not appealing to the average person because it's like kind of I don't know like greasy and gross like I don't know they're not they're not um they're not cutesy in the same way that candies and like milkshakes and desserts can be cute in photorealistic form then again I wouldn't want like a croissant palette I feel like that would be weird right and also I don't want like photorealistic animals on my packaging either like why I don't remember who did it uh, but there's this thing called the companion palette and it's really beautiful there's also like you know Arthurian blush palette and that has a bear those are stylized animals and I think those are really cute um, maybe not my aesthetic but I can really appreciate like the look of it and I can see why people enjoy it but I don't understand like a photorealistic thing that's like if we had all the like botanical themes for makeup and instead of doing stylized illustrations of those things, like of a rose in a garden or of like a secret forest or constellations, like we just put a realistic photograph of the sky for our astrology collections or like a photo of a rose bush for our rose collection. Like it just, it doesn't hit the same, right? Like there's something about the graphic representation of like an idea that makes it appealing to us in packaging and like as an idea. When we take a taco and we just turn it from taco the idea to picture of a taco on a palette it's like so so reprehensible to me like i just don't know why that exists um and i think that is it for things that i don't like for this round i can definitely go on and on and on and on and on about things that i don't like in makeup packaging but i think it would make me come off as even more of a curmudgeon than i already am and i don't know if i am ready for my ego to handle that right now so for now i will log off and say thank you for watching if you made it this far uh let me know what your least favorite packaging thing was in the last 10 years because i would love to do some digging and find out um i am also thinking of doing a sequel to this of like equally stupid and trivial things that i love <laughs> in packaging i again am very particular clearly and opinionated and what i think is cute and adorable might be disgusting and like absolutely gross to someone else so love to hear your opinions leave them down below don't forget to subscribe to my channel and um Turn on the notification bells for updates on when I upload. I upload pretty frequently, pretty much every other day for makeup and makeup related commentary. So love to have you join our family. I love you guys very much and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.